What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, as you can see, it's pretty cold in the garage. We've got, uh, I think, five degree temperatures right now, and I think the high is gonna be like 13 or 14 today in, in Tennessee. Most of you are experiencing the same exact thing. If you live up north, I'm so sorry. Uh, you're probably dealing with uh, quite the blizzard. But uh, anyways, I, I was sitting in the deer stand for uh, a couple hours this morning, and uh, didn't see any deer, unfortunately, but I was thinking, I was like, man, I should do a knot video. I should, I should talk about the knots that I, that I tie because uh, to me, I like to keep things pretty simple as far as the different types of knots that I use for bass fishing. Um, I have a couple other knots that I use for like fishing up in Alaska and things like that. Uh, for bass fishing though, I like to keep it really simple because you know, a knot is only as good as as you can tie it, you know, and, and when it's cold and you're under pressure, you know, I, I it's really important to have knots that, that you can tie quickly, effectively, and every single time you're gonna do it right. So um, essentially, to kind of break down my, my knot choices, I essentially have three different knots that I use for bass fishing. So we've got um, the polymer knot, and I do something a little bit different with it sometimes, depending on if I'm using monofilament or braid. Uh, sometimes I'll use just a single polymer, the traditional one, or I'll go to a double polymer. And then I have the San Diego Jam Knot and the Uni Knot. Okay, so those are the three that I use. Now, I know this is a hot topic and a lot of people are gonna get on here and just be like, why are you using you know, the Uni Uni? There's so many better knots to connect, uh, you know, uh, braid to a, a leader. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure there is. I'm sure that there are better knots. I've tried the FG knot. I've tried several other knots. And what it comes down to is reliability and just my ability to tie those knots correctly. Uh, again, when my hands are freezing like they are right now and, uh, and when I'm under pressure. So uh, that is the primary reason why I use those knots. I've been using them for a long, long time. The first knot I ever tied was a polymer knot. My dad taught me that knot. And, uh, and since I kind of adopted like the San Diego Jam Knot and the Uni to Uni Knot. So um, let's go ahead. I'm gonna dive right into th these knots, how I tie them and, uh, and why I choose them for each uh, different application. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the, uh, the polymer knot and also the double polymer knot. So what we've got here is we've got some Seaguar Smackdown, Flash Green, so hopefully you can see it really, really good. Um, and so essentially what I use the polymer knot for, and, and admittedly I don't use it nearly as much as I used to when I first started bass fishing. I used to use it all the time. Uh, but nowadays, all I use the polymer for is occasionally monofilament, but I still like to use the San Diego Jam Knot nowadays for, for monofilament, and always with braid. So whenever I'm fishing braided line, like SmackDown, I'm going to be using the, the polymer. And one of the things that I do a little bit different is with the braid, I like to make sure that there's there's absolutely no slippage. So what I'll do is do a, a, a double polymer. But here's the traditional polymer knot. So you go through the eye of the hook, okay? Make sure you get enough of that tag end to work with, okay? And then you're gonna bring that tag end back through the eye of the hook all right, and then you're gonna hold the tag end and the main line on, in, in one hand between your thumb and index finger and then your other thumb and index finger, you're gonna hold that loop that you just made, okay? So then you're going to go ahead and do kind of an overhand knot with this, okay? Let's see if we can focus in here a little bit better. All right, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this, this loop through that, through that uh, circle we just made, okay? And then we're gonna take this loop, okay? The loop here, we're gonna go ahead and bring it around the hook or the bait, okay? And with treble hook baits, this is a, a little bit of a difficult knot to tie. Let's see if we can get this focused again. 
sorry about that, autofocus. Uh, and so from there, you're just gonna wanna wet it, just put a little bit of spit on it, and tighten it down. And that is the polymer knot, okay? So that is, is a really super strong knot, very easy to tie. The hardest part about a polymer is really, uh, you know, bringing that loop around a treble hook bait. You tend to get your, your the, the hook stuck on that line as you do that process. But um, then from there, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off, tag in there. And there you go, that is, that is it. I forgot to mention, the other application for a polymer knot is going to be a, a drop shot. That is the only application that I'm, I'm using the, the polymer knot with, with uh, fluorocarbon. Uh, and the reason why the polymer knot is so good, and I'm gonna just retire real quick because I can kind of illustrate why a, a drop shot is so good with a polymer knot or vice versa. So we, and you get a bonus, you get to see me do it again. So we're gonna go back through the eye of the hook. Give myself a little bit more slack here. Through that eye of the hook, okay. Make a loop, overhand knot, and then you're gonna go around the bait or the hook again. Now in the case of a drop shot, so uh, what we're gonna end up doing with a drop shot is I'm gonna go ahead and slip this tag in, and this could be 18 inches, 12 inches, whatever you know length you're using for the drop shot leader. Uh, and then I'm just gonna drop that through the top of the eye of the hook and you know tighten it down. So that way, when I'm drop shotting, it keeps the hook pretty, you know, pretty much straight up and ready to to you know, set the hooks. And so if you do, do it the opposite way, the, the hook's gonna be upside down. But um, that's why a, a, a polymer is so good with a drop shot is just because you can, you can easily make this, this uh, tag end here and I like to just pass it through the eye of the hook. I think it's pretty standard for people to be using a polymer uh, for, a, um, for a drop shot. It works really, really good. Uh, and and again, I really do like to pass the tag in through the, the top of the eye of the hook for it to, to be able to stick straight up like that. So that is the single polymer, really good for braided line, uh, monofilament, and, and uh, fluorocarbon for a drop shot. Clean up here. All right, so what I'm gonna show you now is the, 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 the kind of modified uh, polymer that I use for uh, fishing with braid. So anytime I'm fishing with with heavy braid and heavy cover, I'm going to do the double polymer because braid has the tendency to not cinch down on itself. So it, it will slip a little bit. Now I haven't really had an issue with a single polymer, but I, I started doing it just in case, and uh, and so I definitely haven't had any issues since then. So the way that you do the the single polymer is you do the same exact process. Tag in through, back through the eye again. You got a loop, tag in in the main line. Tag in in the main line on one side, loop on the other side, okay? So we're gonna do the same overhand knot one time. All right, so we got that one. And all we're gonna do is do that again. So one more time, hands are cold. All we're, and then you just do the same thing. You wrap it around the hook round the bait and you go ahead and cinch that. Well, first you wet it. Don't ever forget that. Don't for ever forget to wet your bait or wet your line. And then you cinch it down like that, all right? So this is not a modification that I suggest for any type of my nylon line, monofilament or fluorocarbon. This is not something that I, I think is, is gonna be beneficial. In fact, I think it's gonna create a lot of of chafing and potentially burn your line with those lines. But with braid, that's not an issue and it really allows for a stronger knot, I think, and, and way less uh, potential for uh, you know, a slippage. So that is a polymer knot. That is my knot of choice for fishing, you know, braid, 
uh, a drop shot and sometimes monofilament, but I don't use it as much with, with fluorocarbon because there have been some people that have noted that fluorocarbon tends to uh, to uh, get weakened with a polymer knot. Now, whether or not that's true, I don't know. That I kind of went with the bandwagon on that. Um, and I, I could see how that could be because the, the polymer knot, the way it's designed, will tighten up on itself. And uh, when you have a line that tightens up on itself, you have potential for that type of like cutting action that, you know, where it digs into itself. So uh, let's go to the next one. I'm gonna go get a bait because it's a lot easier with a bait to do the San Diego jam knot. Still cold in here. All right, so let's do the San Diego jam knot. This is one that I started doing probably about 10 years ago for fishing fluorocarbon, and it is by far the easiest knot for me to tie very quickly, and it's it really hasn't failed me. I don't have hardly any failures at the knot that I can recall. Um, and uh, so it is a knot that I have a lot of confidence in. I feel like it's the best uh, uh, connection for fluorocarbon to lure or hook out there. Um, that's just my personal opinion and I just have a lot of confidence in it. So essentially what we're gonna do with this one, I might move the camera just a little bit. All right, so what we're gonna do, we got a chatterbait here, nice little uh, uh, cross-sized chatterbait. And we're gonna go ahead and bring the line through that tie there. Okay, once, and what we're gonna do, all right, so we're gonna end up just bringing the tag in and the main line close together. I'm gonna take my thumb and my index finger that's holding the, the main line, and I'm going to go ahead and pinch the, um, the, the uh, tag line there, the tag end, sorry. We're, we're coming in and out of focus there. Let me try to get there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, and just wrap it. It's easier for me to do it when I don't have to keep it in frame, but we're just gonna wrap it around that, that those two line together. We're gonna wrap it around about six or seven times. I've already lost count, so that feels about right, right there. Okay, so you wrapped it around going down towards the bait and all you're gonna do is take your tag end, okay, and you're going to put it through that loop that was formed at the bottom, just like that, and then you're gonna go do that from it, through the top. And then you're just gonna, you know, wet it like all the other ones, and it's really important with fluorocarbon and monofilament that you wet it and then you just tighten it down. And that right there is the San Diego Jam Knot. Super, super easy to tie, very, very quick. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of zoom out and I'm gonna show you like how quickly you can end up tying this, this knot um, and, uh, and why it's just you know my favorite overall. Uh, and one of the things that, that you really get out of this knot is the fact that you know, you don't have to bring a loop around a bait that has treble hooks and, you know, skirt material and all that, like the polymer, which tends to get tangled in itself or in the bait uh, as you do that. But with the San Diego Jam Knot, you can pretty much keep away from the hooks. So it is very efficient and you rarely have like those situations where you're getting all tangled. And by the way, these are, these are some uh, clippers that work really, really good. These are Fitzgerald uh, fishing clippers, but they're also a, a really killer split ring tool. Very, very uh, nice little beak on there, and they cut really, really well. So check those out, 44tackle.com. I'll put a link in the description below. All right, so look, I'm gonna zoom out and show you how quickly I can tie this. Let's get this camera, there we go. All right, let's do this. Again, my hands are pretty much frozen right now, so my dexterity is pretty low, but um, I've, I could still tie this knot pretty fast. All right, I think that was more, t uh, <laughs> more wraps than I needed to. Oop, hardest part, getting it through that bottom loop. Top loop's pretty easy. And then wet it, and then tighten it down pretty fast, uh, especially with cold hands. And again, 
that's what it's all about. Just being able to tie a knot that is it that is reliable and that you can tie it consistently with cold hands or under pressure. You know, or in the dark too. Like I I I can do this in the dark, no light. It's a little bit harder, but all right, so let's get to the next knot. The next knot is a uni to uni knot, which is a connection usually between uh, braid and, and fluorocarbon, but you can also tie just braid to braid uh, or braid to monofilament uh, with this, this knot. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the uni to uni knot. We're gonna get some fluorocarbon so I can, I can kind of keep track of the, the leader material versus the braided main line that we're using. So real quick, I'm gonna go get that, that floor carbon and we're gonna tie the unit to unit. All right, so here we go. Um, this is gonna be a little bit harder to see, but we've got the uh, floor carbon line right here and we've got the braided main line that we're gonna be tying to, okay? So both sides of this knot are exactly the same. They're just the same knot cinched together. And so if you can't quite see it as good with the, uh, the floor carbon, you're just essentially repeating what you saw with the braid that's a little bit more visible. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the tag end of the main line and the tag end of the, uh, of the uh, leader and we're gonna run them parallel going opposite directions, just like just like this, all right? So once we run those parallel, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more, okay? And so once we run those parallel, usually I start with the, the braid, but all you do is you create a little loop here, okay, with the, with the tag end of that, that loop going towards the, uh, the other line, so towards the end of the, the leader material in this case. So what I like to do to keep track of all this is I take my middle finger on my, my right hand in this instance and I kind of keep that loop open. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that tag end and we're gonna pass it over the leader material and the, the, um, and the, the you know, main line that we're tying right now. And we pass it through that loop. And we're gonna do that six times to three, four, five, six. So it really helps to keep your middle finger in that loop to keep it open, okay? So that's kind of a, a big key. So what we're gonna do from there is we're just gonna cinch that down. Again, I would, I would normally wet it. The slower you go, the better it's gonna kind of come together there. Um, and then we're gonna turn around. We're gonna do the same exact thing for the fluorocarbon leader. So we're gonna create that loop, okay? So the, the, the tag end of that, that fluorocarbon is pointing towards the main line, all right? And so we're going to loop that tag end through the, the, the circle there six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and then we're just going to go ahead and tighten that down. All right, so the floor carbon is gonna be a little bit more uh, rigid, so it doesn't, it may not lay out perfectly when you initially start tightening it. And again, you wanna wet it. I'm not gonna wet it in this instance, but, and just tighten it down slowly. And that right there is the uni to uni knot. And the reason why I like the uni to uni knot so much is the fact that, that it's, it's not because it's the smallest, most streamlined thin knot out there uh, you know, that you can tie. It definitely is not that. It's actually one of the more bulky knots as far as a main line to leader material connection. However, to me, it's the most reliable, it's the easiest to tie. And again, I can tie it with cold hands and that is the biggest key. So, it, and it, it really doesn't fail me. The biggest frustration I have with this knot and the, the, the reason why I wish I have found a knot that I can tie as consistently, as quickly, and as, as um, uh, you know, reliably as the uni to uni knot 
is because you know with spinning gear it tends to catch the, the the guides a little bit more so occasionally you make a cast and then the the it the knot just kind of hangs on a guide and st stops the cast in its tracks which you know is always super frustrating but that is that doesn't happen all the time and uh and the the overall benefits of not this not outweigh the the negatives for sure so that's the reason why i like to use the uni to uni there's other knots like the fg knot um let me tell you i've tried to tie the fg knot and and let alone with with you know warm hands you know if i had if i had freezing fingers like i do today where they're starting to really seize up i don't know if i could tie the fg now i've really tried it many times and i you know the thing that turned me off about the fg knot in, in particular and i don't mean to pick on the fg knot because i know it's a great knot that a lot of people use is effective and this is more of a a a hit on me because uh, I just can't tie the sucker uh, consistently. You know, I, I end up one out of three knots or something like that just ends up falling apart when I go to test it. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Maybe uh, maybe you guys can, can help me with, with uh, what I might be doing wrong. I've even had guys watch me tie it and they're like, oh, that's right. And then pop, it breaks. So I'm not sure why I can't do it, uh, the FG knot in a, um, in a reliable way. But honestly, I don't need to go to the FG knot, okay? Th these three knots right here, these are the knots that I like to tie because again, they're super reliable and they're easy to tie. So um, I don't think that you guys need to, to, to go, go elsewhere as far as uh, learning how to tie any knots. If you learn to tie these three knots, I guarantee you can use them throughout your fishing career, your, your, you know, your, your, your life out there on the water. I promise these are gonna perform. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think about the knots that I just showed you how to tie. Do you agree with me on some of them? Do you disagree? And, uh, and am I just a doofus for not being able to tie the FG knot? Let me know in the, the comments below. Anyways guys, I'm gonna go warm up my digits. I gotta get back inside. Hopefully the pipes aren't frozen and uh, I'm gonna see you out on the water or out on the ice.